Hello from the Music Interview Corner, today from Helsinki with the Rasmus with Lauri. Hey, Lauri. Hey, hey. Thank you so much for taking time for this interview. Of course. Nice to be here. <laughs> Uh, your 10th studio album is called Rice, and it's going to come out in a few days on September 23rd. How did you experience the recording process? Well, it was very exhausting. I mean, it, there's so many things that happened during the last three years while we've been putting this album together. Like, everything started off really smoothly, and we were supposed to be in a nice big studio to record this. But then COVID started, and everything was ruined, and we actually did most of it uh, remotely so that I was in Hawaii where I live, Era was in Australia, Paul and Aki were in Helsinki. So we were working on the computer screen trying to like create music. It's like, oh my God, that was so bad. But, but we decided to try it and we got some good stuff done like that, you know. It was very different like recording at home I was recording something in my car and like, um, you know, and some of it was actually pretty good because those were like a little strange places. And a uh, funny anecdote is like Eero once recorded some bass in the music store because he needed a certain sound. So he went to the music store and said like, hey, can I try that bass? And, and then he opened his laptop and he recorded some parts in the store. I was like, come on. That's so cool. But that's cool. That's very creative. Yeah. I mean, that when, when you have crisis like that, then you have to be creative because it was a devastating situation. You know, we were on the different parts of the planet, not able to see each other for over a year. Oh, yeah. So instead of doing nothing, we at least tried something. And then, well, the situation kind of got so bad that we almost ended up breaking up with the band. Oh, no. Yeah, I was I was saying myself like oh, I'm just gonna leave and this is shit and this is not gonna work <laughs> out. And then I think Pauli really strongly felt the same. And then I've, actually he left the band uh, about a year and a half ago. So we were just in the middle of the writing the, and producing the album, and then he left. And like oh my god, everything was falling apart. But uh, we still continued and. Pretty fast afterwards, we met Empu, who mm -hmm. became the new guitarist. And we wrote some new songs, Jezebel, Rise, you know, Live and Never Die, songs that ended up on this album. So after all pain, there was kind of a happy ending to this. You know, it was a long journey, difficult one, mm -hmm. but it ended, ended in, a, in a positive note. And I actually really like it because on the album, the album itself kind of tells the story, you know, mm -hmm. all these different things that happen. So, yeah, and I think Empu is great. Empu is the best. We're so lucky to have her. You know, she's a great guitarist, of course, but she's very charismatic, very uh, interesting person, and very much fun to be with. You know, she like instantly became our sister, <laughs> somehow like a family member, and uh, that's how we usually treat each other in the band, mm -hmm. like. We are very close, like brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, of course, we spend time together, but also, like, just like, um, you know, how how we share everything. I think it's important to be very open and, like, vulnerable to each mm -hmm. other to be able to create something great. Yeah, I'm so excited to hear your new album. <laughs> yes. Well, I can give it to you right now. Oh, wow. Yes. You can have okay, this. On camera. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> One really? week before... Anyone thank else? you, thank you, thank You're you welcome. so much. I also really like the name, and it sounds like rising up, you know, from the ashes of the pandemic. And thank yeah, you so much. actually, we changed the name. It was something else before. It was called Night Division. That was sort of reflecting mm -hmm. the time when we were separated from each other. But we wanted to change the name at the end to be Rise because we felt like this is the new beginning for the mm -hmm. Rasmus with Empu and everything. Yeah, and there's also a book about your band that was just released at the end of August by Ari Ventanen. It's called The Rasmus. Like your band, it also tells the story of your band. What can you tell us about this book? Yeah, the book was another thing we did during the COVID years. Uh, I think for me, at least, it was a very nice therapy session to start <laughs> going through yeah. my life since the childhood, you know. Uh, and it's a... It's a it's a full life story. You know, we have been together 28 years with the band. And even before that, you know, I had some bands and I was playing guitar and, 
and in love with music ever since I was like eight, nine years old. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting maybe for the fans to read what things led to the Rasmus, how, you know, the beginning was. I, I always think that the beginnings are the most interesting mm -hmm. part, you know, like when something is created and why and what were the reasons. And, you know, it has a lot to do with destiny too. Like these people found each other they got this chemistry, mm -hmm. and it's like, it's kind of magical. I'm very proud of the book. It's a, it's a great book. We worked on it almost two years, mm -hmm. making hundreds of interviews, and um, it, was, um, it was very nice to go through the history, all the good times, and also the bad times, you know. It was kind of strengthening mm -hmm. us as a group to to go through the, the history so far. And I think it's also nice to share the bad times because it can encourage other bands who are going through difficult times. Yeah, exactly. It would be very boring to read just <laughs> good, good times. I think always uh, you need in life, you need to get some, um, not bad times, but low times and challenges mm -hmm. and these kind of things to, to realize like what you have and, and It's very human just to, you know, to get used to all the good things we have. Mm -hmm. Like, let's say I, I had COVID and I lost my sense of taste oh, no. for a few days. But you're okay now. I'm okay now. I don't have COVID now. No, I trust you. But, you know, yeah. <laughs> but, but uh, <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, because I love to eat. And, like, all that things, you know, I couldn't smell anything like the smoke or something. You know, I was like, oh, my God, this is so horrible. I really got devastated. And so, you know, a lot of things you sort of um, take for granted and, mm -hmm. and when they're taken away from you, you just realize how important they are. But it was only for a few days and then you got better? Yes, it was. That's good. But then again, like ever after that, I've been really like, oh, this tastes so good. Oh, my <laughs> God. Smell this, you know. <laughs> like, it's just nice to like enjoy. And that's how, how I kind of keep reminding myself like how I should approach life. Mm -hmm. like really enjoy the little moments and little things those are very yeah. important and actually the first song on the album is called Live and Never Die mm -hmm. and that is kind of the philosophy behind the song uh, like really enjoy the moments yeah and appreciate things yeah that's beautiful and yeah you live in Hawaii why did you decide to live there uh, well it was just a wild idea once uh, I went there for a holiday And then I thought, oh, well, I could live here. And uh, it was a very spontaneous thing. I just a month afterwards, I packed my stuff and moved there. Because I used to live in uh, California, mm -hmm. uh, Santa Monica, before. And um, it wasn't really a big deal anymore, like, to mm -hmm. go a little further from Finland. But honestly, I think it's very far. Uh, Hawaii, Hawaii is too far from Europe. So mm -hmm. I'm actually thinking of moving... Uh, maybe to Miami next to be a little oh, yes. closer to mm -hmm. to the rest of the band. Yeah, I was in LA too for three years, and I'm considering now if I go back, if I go to LA or Miami. Miami is also such a fascinating place, also for musicians and actors. Yeah, it is. There's a different vibe again. I think Hawaii was great as like a beautiful paradise with the nature and everything, surfing and all that stuff. But uh, I couldn't really find my soulmates, like music people there. Mm -hmm. I was pretty much alone with my songs. And for some time it was okay, but I I kind of want to have that feeling like when I walk on the streets or go to a bar or something, to the parties, that I can meet someone, a great musician, you know, film director, whatever, like something great yeah. can happen and I can make new friends who are maybe similar uh, than me, you know. Yeah, you need to find your tribe. I feel that's really important. Exactly. While you were in L.A., you shot two music videos for your other project, Amanda. And I think Amanda is very fascinating because it's so different from all your other musical projects. So, yeah, what was the inspiration behind that and how did you come up with that concept? Well, I've always loved the electronic music as well as rock and, and other music. Uh, and I, it was just something like was very much fun to make these crazy videos, yeah. especially the videos are fun 
like uh, just sort of improvising with my friend Uwe from s Sweden. He's done many videos for me. Did he do my favorite drug in my house? N my house, yeah, he did that. But um, my favorite drug we did with Eero, the, our Rasmus bass mm -hmm. player. But it's those been like um, fun projects, but always my main focus has been on the Rasmus. But uh, sometimes I uh, really want to do things that are really crazy and like mm -hmm. spontaneous and, you know, kind of light. Mm -hmm. And who came up with this Amanda character? Uh, it, was, um, it was my idea, but there was actually a guy from Sweden who built it, the first prototype. <laughs> cool. Yeah, but it was like Amanda, the, the hand puppet, mm -hmm. she's able to do all the things that I'm not, you know. And she can be really bad, like she's a real bitch, you know. She I noticed with the baseball bat and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's doing all the bad stuff like drugs and <laughs> going to strip clubs and whatever. That's so cool. I would like to meet her sometime. <laughs> you might. Does she live still in L.A. without you or is she in Hawaii? <laughs> she lives in a box right now in oh. the warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and maybe we can talk about the Eurovision Song Contest because this year the Rasmus represented Finland with the song Jezebel. How did you experience all of this? Uh, that was fantastic. I think um, first I was a bit like afraid what to expect because you know Eurovision sounds like not a, like a thing for us to do. Mm -hmm. But I was really craving for some excitement after COVID. We were not able to play any concerts for yeah. a long time, and then this idea came up, and I came up with a song that became Jezebel later on. So it was a nice challenge to have, you know. And especially when we had a new guitarist and boom mm -hmm. with us, it was great to have something to conquer together mm -hmm. as a new team, sort of new lineup. So it was it was great, and uh, we met some really good friends there. Uh, made met some really nice musicians. Uh, everything was just um, exciting and totally something new we haven't done before. Cool. And last year you had a cooperation with Blind Channel who were also at the Eurovision Song Contest and you re-recorded their song Dark Side. And how, how did that happen? How did this collaboration happen? Well, when I saw that they, um, they did well in the competition and they were all over the news mm -hmm. and I was doing my thing called Bedroom Sessions where I was doing cover songs mm -hmm. of songs that somehow moved me. So I was like, yeah, this is a great song and I started making the the version of it and then I, I called the guys like hey I'm, I'm working on this thing would you would you do this together with me and and they did it was great it was uh, a big news here in Finland at least mm -hmm. like uh, this kind of a collaboration I really like to do collaborations um, with other artists mm -hmm. it's um, it's very much fun because you always learn something from them And the results are somehow different that you would do just by yourself. Yeah. Like every time when we've done something with Apocalyptica or, you know, whatever other band, it has been a little like a surprise at the end mm -hmm. that what com comes out of there. Yeah, and you did also another collaboration with Apocalyptica, Venomous Moon. That's a really cool song and a really cool video. Who had the idea for this video? Um, I think... Um, There were a lot of people who, had, who were kind of creative this video, but um, I think um, the main idea came from the direc director, if mm -hmm. I remember right. But then we started like sort of adding to this, like uh, we had this like a Stranger Things look, yeah. like with the kids camping in the tent and like uh, having these monsters mm -hmm. that are actually quite cute. Like, you know, first they look scary, mm -hmm. but they are actually, they just want to be a friend or something. I think they look a bit like a love child of Amanda and Haisuli. What would you say? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Maybe. What's your plans for the future? For the future, uh, well, right now we're busy because we're releasing the album this week. And uh, there's going to be a lot of gigs this year. At the end of the year, we're going to play all over Europe starting in October. And then we go to Mexico, play some gigs there. And next year, it's going to be all about touring. Wonderful. Yes. Yes, have fun on tour. Thank you. Thank you so much for this. I can't wait to listen to it. And guys here, it's going to be out on September 23rd. Yes, but this is mine. You don't get this. <laughs> so thank you so much for the interview, Lauri. Thank you very much. And goodbye from the Music Interview Corner. Bye. Bye.